Good evening, and thank you for joining us for this pre-recorded midweek service for the season of Lent. This is the first time that we're doing this since we uh, realized we were going to have to cancel public worship services for the foreseeable future in light of the um, coronavirus outbreak. And while we hate not to be able to gather together as a household of faith, this is a necessary measure that it would be good for us to take voluntarily, but we are also actually required to take this measure by our civil authorities. And we do so cheerfully, knowing that they are looking out for our community and doing what is necessary to control the spread of this outbreak and mitigate the damage caused thereby. So we look forward to our next time being able to gather together in person, but until then, we'll do our best to make pre-recorded worship available to you through our YouTube channel. Tonight's service is going to follow the same format that our Lenten midweek services have been following. We will uh, sing uh, some familiar Lenten hymns. We'll use the intro it from this past Sunday. And if you have a hymnal at home, I encourage you to follow along. I will say that Concordia Publishing House has made a license available temporarily for use of the Lutheran Service Builder, which will allow us to email you a PDF copy of the bulletin we're using, complete with hymn, lyrics, and music. So um, we, we hope to be able to provide as full an experience of worship in the house of God as we can going forward. But for, not, for tonight, we're just getting started with this and figuring things out. Um, also, I don't want to leave my congregation for too long without the sacrament of the altar, so we are exploring ways that we can get small groups in here by uh, pre-registration so that we can take turns gathering uh, safely and responsibly to receive the sacrament of the altar, but you'll be hearing more from me about that. A special thank you to Ellen for her willingness to join me this evening to make this recording. Uh, this will be some extra work for her, so I really appreciate it. Our opening hymn is number 435, Come to Calvary's Holy Mountain.
following along in the hymnal, the service of confession and absolution begins on page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace, for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given His only Son to die for us and for His sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on His name, He gives power to become the children of God and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. The intro is sung in our customary manner, and the Gloria Patri is sung from page 186 of the hymn.
have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. At that time, God said, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. Now when all the people saw the thunder, and the flashes of lightning, and the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled, and they stood far off and said to Moses, You speak to us, and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us, lest we die. Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, that the fear of him may be before you, that you may not sin. The people stood far off, while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the people of Israel, you have seen for yourselves that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall not make gods of silver to be with me, nor shall you make for yourselves gods of gold. An altar of earth you shall make for me, and sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your beast offerings, your sheep and your oxen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise to the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. At that time, Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat. He answered them, and why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God commanded, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If anyone tells his father or his mother what you would have gained from me is given to God, he need not honor his father. So for the sake of your tradition, you have made void the word of God, you hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the people to him and said to them, Hear and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles the person, but what comes out of the mouth. This defiles the person. Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind guides. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain the parable to us. And he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is expelled? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles the person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, fornication, 
theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. This is the Gospel of the Lord. His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 590, Baptized into Your Name Most Holy. Exodus, the 30th chapter, beginning at the 17th verse. 
the Lord said to Moses, You shall also make a basin of bronze, with its span of bronze, for washing. You shall put it between the tent of meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it, with which Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet. When they go into the tent of meeting, or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn a food offering to the Lord, they shall wash with water, so that they may not die. They shall wash their hands and their feet, so that they may not die. It shall be a statue forever to them, even to him and to his offspring throughout their generations. This is the text. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord Christ Jesus, in our Lenten series on spiritual worship, we have approached closer and closer to the temple on Mount Zion in Jerusalem. We began in the court where we rent our hearts and not our garments through repentance, the offering of a broken and a contrite heart unto God. We then progressed up to the bronze altar where we began with the sin offering by giving Jesus, Jesus who gave himself on the cross for our redemption to pay for the sin of the world, and by believing in him, we gain the fruits of that self-offering for ourselves and receive the forgiveness of our sins. Then we offer peace offerings, offerings that come in thanksgiving for what God has done for us. We burn them on the altar and send them up to heaven, and we do that spiritually through love, love of God above all things, and love for our neighbors as ourselves, thus giving our own bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is our spiritual worship. Now, at last, we are ready in our spiritual worship to approach closer to the temple, but there's one more thing we have to do before we enter into the temple itself, into the sanctuary. There, between the great bronze altar and the door into the sanctuary, is the bronze basin. It wasn't that elaborate a matter in the tabernacle, but the basin at the Temple of Solomon was grand indeed. It was humongous, and it was borne on twelve oxen. It was there so that the priests could bathe themselves before entering into the sanctuary. And they had to undergo this bathing, this cleansing of their bodies, or else they would die. And they would not die a natural death. Sometimes, of course, you can die by failing to wash, because if you don't wash, you might contract illness. But this is not that kind of washing. This is a ritual cleansing so that the priest will be prepared to appear before God according to his divine institution. When priests presume to come before God apart from God's institution, they die. Aaron learned that the hard way in the case of his two sons, Nadab and Abihu who came before God to offer incense that God had not commanded. And as they offered it, they were consumed with fire from the Lord, and Aaron had to hold his peace. He was not allowed to weep for his sons, because they were killed justly by God for failing to obey his commands in the administration of their priestly office at the tabernacle. For a priest not to wash upon entry into the sanctuary was for that priest to invite death and judgment. And so if we spiritual priests are to worship the Lord our God in spirit and in truth, if we are to presume to come into his mere presence through spiritual worship, we need to wash. And how do we wash? and thus become authorized for spiritual worship within the sanctuary. Well, if you take a moment to think about this bronze basin and what it is similar to, 
and what it might signify for us Christians, I think you'll come up with the answer readily enough. This bronze basin for the washing of the priests, of course, corresponds to our own Christian sacrament of holy baptism. We have our baptismal font here at Holy Cross. It's usually kept off to the side. It's not in the same position as the bronze basin at the tabernacle and temple of old. But on those days when we have a baptism here at church, we pull out our baptismal font and we place it right here in the middle in the way of the entry into the sanctuary proper, in the way of the entry into the chancel. It is positioned very much like the bronze basin at the tabernacle, and it serves a similar function. If you want to worship God in spirit and in truth, you make a stop at the font, and there you are cleansed. You are washed clean from your sin. You receive all the benefits that Jesus has purchased by his death on your behalf. You receive by faith everything that God promises you in holy baptism. But there is a difficulty. The priests at the tabernacle washed every time they entered the sanctuary. But we are only baptized once. After all, baptism is our rebirth, our birth of water and the Spirit, our birth by the Spirit of God, so that we now are no longer flesh born of flesh, but we are spirit born of spirit. And how many times are you born? In your flesh, you are born but once from your earthly mother. In your spirit, likewise, you are born only once from the Spirit of God. There is only one birth, and so there is only one baptism. We don't stop at the font physically every time we wish to enter into the sanctuary. How then are we to wash ourselves? How are we to cleanse ourselves as spiritual priests when we want to enter before God and offer Him spiritual worship? Well, to understand that, we need to understand a little bit more about how baptism works. Baptism does not work simply by the pouring of the water. Baptism works by the pouring of the water according to Christ's institution with the Word of God joined to that water. I baptize thee in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And with that baptism, with the Word of God that is in and with the water, there come all manner of promises of God that are packaged for you in the water. Jesus says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You can look it up in Mark 16, 16. When you believe what God promises you in baptism, rebirth of water and the Spirit, new life, cleansing from sin, forgiveness and salvation, you have the salvation given to you in baptism. You have it by believing it. You can be baptized ever so truly. You can be baptized with pure water in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and it is a valid baptism, and God considers you baptized, and yet, if you do not believe what is promised you in baptism, you might say your baptism is reckoned as unbaptism, because the blessings of baptism are received in no other way than by faith. And faith is not simply a one-and-done activity. Faith is a continual state in the heart of the Christian wrought by the Holy Spirit through the promises of God in His Word. God promised you forgiveness and salvation when you were baptized. And as long as you believe what is promised you in your baptism, you are continually plunging yourself into that saving bath, receiving anew throughout your life all of the blessings given to you in baptism. We talked about this in our Sunday worship a few weeks ago. Even before you are baptized, you still have a baptismal faith if you believe what is promised you in baptism 
and are headed toward the pond. Likewise, now, all of us continue from the font, believing day by day everything that God has promised us in this sacrament. That's one reason that when Martin Luther gives us an outline for daily prayer every morning and evening in the Catechism, you remember how he has us begin? He says, you begin by making the sign of the Holy Cross in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Why do we make the sign of the cross? It's the same sign that was made over us when we were baptized, and it calls the remembrance of the same name into which we were baptized. Every morning when you get up, every night when you go to bed, you reclaim your identity as a baptized child of God who are cleansed, who are washed in this sacred bath. And thus, through the continual exercise of your faith, you are always bathing yourself in a far greater basin that qualifies you for entry into the sanctuary to worship your God in spirit and in truth. So, in your daily, regular, perpetual spiritual worship, you start with contrition, with sorrow over your sin. You then proceed in faith toward the Son of God who gave Himself for your salvation as your sin offering. You then offer yourself in love to your God as the great burnt offering. And then you reclaim by faith everything that God promised you in your baptism, the cleansing of that sacrament which prepares you for entry into His temple. Next week, God willing, we'll continue this series and we will find ourselves actually there in the sanctuary. And we're going to consider each of the temple furnishings and what they teach us about spiritual worship. For now, as you worship from home, among all the other things you do in your spiritual worship, let this be chief among them this week. Remember that you are baptized and that in your baptism you have received the promise of the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name and everlasting life through faith in Him. And it is this that qualifies you for spiritual worship in the heavenly temple of God. God grant us such spiritual worship now and throughout our earthly lives. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We sing the Offertory, page 956.
from all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have heard and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To raise those who fall, and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord to give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to be with all women and child and all nursing mothers, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors and slanderers and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting His promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Grant us grace to trust you during this time of illness and distress. In mercy, put an end to the epidemic that afflicts us. Grant relief to those who suffer and comfort all that mourn. Sustain all medical personnel and caregivers in their labors, and cause your people ever to serve you in righteousness and holiness. Grant that we may once again be able to gather together face to face as your household of faith, and grant that we may ever long for the gathering of ourselves together. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.